chapter four can be really tricky for people. So I thought I'd make us an extra example to try to set all the important pieces in our mind. So we have the following data set that shows the relationship between the explanatory variable of a state's high-speed internet rate, which is the percent of households that have high-speed internet access, and the response variable of its teen birth rate, which is the births per 1,000 females aged 15 to 19. This was from the year 2021. Yes, it's a real data set in case you're interested. So we're going to be asked to find the following. And the first thing they want us to find is the correlation coefficient. And I can see right behind it's going to be the coefficient of determination. So to do all of that stuff, we're going to use StatCrunch. Now, I actually have the data set available in StatCrunch, so let's go grab it. And I have it right here as well. So StatCrunch data, I think it's under this piece. So um, the link will work, and I'll put the link in the video to this as well. Okay, so we have the internet rate here and the teen birth rate here. So we're going to go to Stat, Regression, simple linear. The x variable is your explanatory variable, which in our case is internet access, and then teen birth rate. And then we would say compute. And there we have it. So all the important pieces we need are right up here in the top. It's letting us know, by the way, that the dependent variable, that's the response variable, dependent is an algebra term, response is a statistics term, but it's the teen birth rate. And the independent variable, which is your x, that's your internet. So independent is the way algebra refers to it. We refer to it as an explanatory variable. So it's internet. OK, so the correlation coefficient's right here. Here, let me make this a little bit bigger for you. If I zoom in, you can see. <laughs> there you can see it. All right, so the correlation coefficient is negative 0 0.733. And the rest of this stuff, by the way, we don't need. Um, it's just there for our own benefits. If we want to see a graph, it's over here. That's lovely, but um, the correlation coefficient's right there. Okay, so it's negative 0 0.733. I'm just going to use capital R. Our textbook uses lowercase r. Our computer programs use capital R. It doesn't really make a lot of difference. It's fine. All right, now the strength and direction. Okay, for that we need to go to the exam notes packet and look at the graph for R. All right, here's the exam notes packet. So it's the yellow packet. Oh, that's the color I usually make it. <laughs> and so we want to look here at the strength of this correlation coefficient. All right, so let me zoom in a little bit so we can see it better. All right, our value is negative. So we know we're on the negative side. And it's negative 0.733. So that's in the moderate negative zone. Right, because 0.7 is between 0.5 and 0.8. So it's a moderate negative relationship. All right, so that's what we'll say. Moderate negative. It used to have a circling there, but I got rid of it. So that's a typo. I'll fix that. Um, I had a multiple choice there, but I changed it to just filling it in. All right, now the coefficient of determination, that's r squared. Right, R squared is also in StatCrunch. It gives it to us right here. RSQ, SQ stands for squared. So it's 0.537. So I'm going to write that down. 0.537. There we go. Now, interestingly enough, we can actually verify that our relationship is moderate if we want to look at the R squared value. Because if we look at the appendix, R squared, which is 0.5, is, or 0.537, is right in the blue moderate zone. Right? R squared can't tell us negative. For that, we have to look to the slope or the, y, or the R value, right? because they're both negative or positive together. But the coefficient of determination can help us with the strength. Now, the relationship or the interpretation piece for the coefficient of determination is down here on the yellow packet. It's also in the first page of the section 4.3 notes. So that's what we're going to write for the interpretation. All right, so let's go back and write it that way. So the first thing we have to do is change this to a percent. So we're going to write this as 53.7% of the total variation in a y was in quotes. For us, the y variable is the teen birth rate. It's the response variable. 
So that's what we'll say. In the teen birth rate, is explained by the least squares regression line. Done. Speaking of the regression line, let's talk about what the least squares regression line is. That's the linear regression equation. And it's also given to us in StatCrunch. So let's go back to StatCrunch. It's right here. Right? Because the teen birth rate is the y. So that's your y, teen birth rate. So y equals 182.446 minus uh, 1.857x. Right? Because there's the 1.857, and then this is the x. And that's multiplication between those two. It doesn't say it, but it is. That's the way math people write. <laughs> right? So this is the way StatCrunch gives it to us. Oh, we should have written StatCrunch somewhere for ourselves. Let's write that down. So the StatCrunch path, actually, I'm going to do it in a different color, just so it kind of pops for us. All right. So StatCrunch, our path was stat regression. Simple linear. Like that. Sorry, I should have put that up there. I forgot about it. That's what we do for almost everything, right? Other than just drawing a scatter plot on its own. All right, so this is the way StatCrunch gives it to us. Now, some students don't like this way because they're not used to it. Um, they like it better written in the algebra way. This is kind of the stats way to write it. This is the way StatCrunch write it, writes it. Um, if you want to, you can reverse it and make it negative 1.857x plus 182.446. Right? That's kind of a more algebra way to write it. It doesn't really matter. It's, it's the same equation both times. It's just changing the order. Um, notice that the number that's by itself, the 182, I was trying to make that better, the 182 is still by itself. It doesn't matter if you put it in front or if you put it in back. And then the 1.857 is with the x. That's a multiplication there. We don't bother putting a multiplication dot, but that's what it is. All right. Now, what is the slope? Well, the slope is always the one that's with the x. It's right here, right? That one that's with the x, with your x variable. So that's negative 1.857. Notice that it's sine which is negative, matches the sign of the r. right? Those have to go together. If r is negative, slope is negative, and vice versa. Now, what does this mean in the context of the situation? Okay, On average, if, and I'm, where am I getting this from? <laughs> I'm just winging this off the top of my head, but it's a, it's a script that we have. Uh, let's see, right here. So on average, if x increases by 1, but x is in quotes because it's really a variable that we have to describe in words. So we'll say on average if, and then x was our internet um, rate. If the internet rate, and these were for states, right? For a state increases by 1. And then we have to put its unit in. And its unit would be, well, let's think. Let's we look back up here. It always pays to look these up. So the explanatory variable, which is your x, is right there. The unit is right there. And then the y variable is right here. And then its unit is there. We tend to put units in parentheses after a variable is stated. So that's where that's coming from. OK, so then, so we'll say percent right here, because that was the unit, if you will, <laughs> for that um, x variable. Then we'll say, then the teen birth rate 
is expected to decrease. Now I say decrease because it's negative, right? By 1.857, and then the unit is this births per 1,000 females aged 15 to 19. So births per 1,000 females aged 15 to 19. I ran out of space there. All right, now what is the y-intercept? Okay, well always remember that the y-intercept has to have zero, right? Before you write anything else, right? The, the y-intercept is always having an x value of zero. It's stated on the exam notes packet right here. Y-intercept is zero comma b, where b is that constant that's sitting by itself without a variable next to it. So before I write anything else, if I, if when I have a y-intercept question, I always write zero comma, and then I'll go back to the equation and look, and it's this number right here. So it's 182.446. Now, this doesn't make any sense, and the reason it doesn't make sense is actually the zero. Zero was the internet rate, the high-speed internet rate for a state in the U.S. in 2021. And as we can plainly see, even though this is a sample of states, this is obviously not possible, right? So it's impossible for a U.S. state to have no high-speed internet access for the whole state. in 2019, or oh, 2021, sorry. I forgot what year this was, right? No high-speed internet because that's what zero stands for, right? X equals zero. 